Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, we have uh, just a few minutes left to wrap up this Friday morning's um, edition. Um, and it's been a very, very interesting run so far. We have uh, joining us GD Benson, and it's going to be a conversation on the uh, thoughts by the Minister of Information once again, saying that social media, well, they hope that they can be able to regulate and not ban social media. Um, and so we, we would like to talk a little bit more about this, understand what it means to regulate social media, um, in what ways can the government you know, take these actions. GD uh, Benson, thank you so much for stepping in. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. I, your thoughts um, on we don't want to uh, shut it down, we want to regulate. This is a rhetoric that we've had um, over time. Um, what's your thinking on this later, uh, latest uh, re-emphasis? Well, the government cannot come out clean on this. Um, there's an ulterior motive, which is to put fear in people, practicing journalists and non-practicing journalists and citizen journalists. Um, if the minister is saying that, that the intention is to regulate and not to shut down social media, we can as well go back to the end SARS protest. The campaign was for Please end SARS, not times. end policing. No response. I mean, within, SARS, within the SARS unit of the police, there were rogue elements, and that's what the clamor was about. Even though it later grew to other things. It was not an attempt to end policing altogether. Because as I've said time and again, the police are as much victims of the rot in governance as the average man on the streets. Whatever the government plans to do with social media, I'm sure that there are existing laws that take care of some of these issues. And if they are not, they can simply be expanded because lawmaking and interpretation and adjudication is a continuous process in society. So either slander or, lamb, or libel, sorry, there are elements that already make room for what the government plans to do with the social media bill. I, I, I want to know why, um, because we've had this conversation for a while now, I, I, I want to know if we legitimately um, have reasons to put some control on social media uh, the way that the government wants to. Um, have we, except I'm not aware of, have we seen, you know, instances in the last few years where social media has led to chaos, has led to crisis, has led to um, unlawful death, you know, led to issues that the government um, really needs to take control of? Yeah, there's no doubt that there's irresponsible behavior on social media because social media is a leveler. Once you have data, you have a smartphone or a gadget, you can go out there and spew what is false. So there's clearly irresponsible behavior on the social media by certain elements. However, what I've seen in some other clients is campaigns to stem the tide of fake news. So I would have imagined that the federal government through the National Orientation Agency would have a campaign to stem the tide of fake news, which is that when you type that message, before you press the send button, think about the message. Is it, does it have the capacity to inflame or to incite? Is it necessary in the first place? I think it was Michelle Obama that made that point a while back, that before you press, that, before you press the send button, is it even necessary for you to contribute to a debate, whether it's on the WhatsApp group, or on Twitter, or any of these other social media platforms? So I would have thought that the first step should be a campaign in different languages, on different platforms, and on social media itself. Because this is the government, in my estimation, that has used social media the most to get into government, and of course, in governance. So because of the backlash, of, because of the backlash that um, officials of the government sometimes get there's an attempt to gag the people because that's the way it is seen. And if you listen to the minister when he talks, you can you can you can you can infer that the in, the intention is a punitive one. All right, the, 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 this conversation is um, um, coming up again as a result of the NSAS protest. According to the minister in his press conference, um, he believes that social media was wrongly used to. Um, 
amplify the mayhem that occurred in the aftermath of the NSAS protest. Do you align with him um, on this call uh, that social media had a huge role to play in the looting that uh, followed the NSAS protests? Well, social media played a role, no doubt. I mean, the fact that um, Twitter recognized the NSAS with an icon means that the, the, the protest was successful and got the attention. And so I think that is what is rattling the government. The fact that a social media as popular and as reputable as Twitter would align with the people. But I do not, there was, there, there was, there was hunger in the land and then there was anger. So hunger and under, anger more than social media inflamed the, the looting and the, what do you call it? The killings that followed the, the um, October 2020 events. If that shooting did not take place, if the attempt to disperse them violently did not take place, I don't think that the looting would have the looting and the carnage would have followed. Because if a protest had gone on for two weeks and there were there was very little elements of um, violence, so you can tell what led to the violence. October 2020, something on on the 20th of, of October, something happened, and on 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 21st of October there was um, free reign by hoodlums. So okay. it's not so much about the protest. It was the shootings at Lekki Tollgate that led to the carnage afterwards. Okay, I, I want to um, um, take your thinking on the argument that there seemed to be enough regulation already on social media. You have uh, Twitter, for instance, flagging any comments that is yet to be you know, reported or proven. We saw what they did with the U.S. election. Even um, we, we see that oftentimes Facebook, for instance, has uh, people that are on the out, um, lookout for information that is incorrect and might harm uh, the public. Um, we know we have fact check. Africa Check, for instance, is known for verifying information that's put out on social media almost on a daily basis. They churn out uh, fact checking um, information for people uh, to consume. So um, when the government say, says that they want to regulate social media, um, what is your understanding? Do you agree with those who say there's enough regulation? And when governments say they want to regulate, what is your understanding of their kind of regulation on social media? I've said it, I've said it before. I think it's a punitive measure. Um, the government wants to be able to get away with a lot of things. And that's the only thing I see with the attempt to regulate as they've often referred to it. Now, do I think that there are enough laws? I said also before that lawmaking and adjudication and interpretation is a continuous process in what human existence and national development. Somewhere within the laws of libel and slander and any other laws in between, there are some elements that can take care of social media. It, it, all that needs to be done is for inclusion of maybe some courses or some sections in that. Again, I make the point that there's irresponsible behavior on social media. And I think that what the government can also do is to have a working relationship with each of these social media platforms. Because we have seen instances where people reported certain posts by certain people to those social media, um, to the social media um, companies. And those posts are taken down or the people's handles are suspended or removed altogether. How about the government adopts that approach first? Have a working relationship with Twitter or with um, Facebook or with Instagram or what have you. If you find that anything is false or fake, then you can report to those people and then they take it down. And of course, the people will face the full wrath of the law. Because yes, there's fake news. And so people who engage in it must face the full wrath of the law. Thank but clearly, the approach that government is taking is nothing but a punitive one. Judy Benson, thank you so much for your thoughts. Uh, unfortunately, we're entirely out of town, uh, time rather to uh, continue this conversation. But thank you very much for uh, spreading it out so you know, beautifully for us this morning. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. Always. And, um, you know, he has made, you know, pretty uh, strong points, you know, with regards, you know, what level of control we already have um, on, on fake news, on libel and, and things like that. Um, I always want, you know, to remind, you know, us also of the value that social media has brought to Nigeria, to Africa.
the value that it has brought to uh, commerce, to the economy, to small and medium enterprises across the country. A lot of people now have businesses on social media that you know they don't need to rent an office space for. They can sell off you know their Instagram page, they can sell off their Twitter page, um, and so it it has created a lot of value that you know we shouldn't you know take for granted. Um, I, 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 I do agree with you to a certain uh, degree. Um, whatever their plans are, we're here and we will definitely bring the conversation and get people who can share their thoughts on it. Join us uh, so you can have a wider perspective and not just this um, one narrative that seemed to, um, I mean, um, some group would want to push out for all of us. Hello. Um, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.